all of a sudden, he comes back on the 21st, which is the morning uh, before the eclipse, and says, Remember I was telling you, but I was trying to get back for a long time. This is what I was talking about. Mm. You see? That's what he, was, that, he said. This was, huh? I was going to say, because it was unique, because we had the lunar eclipse, we had the full moon, and it was the winter solstice. So it was three things going on at one time. It, it, three things going on at one time. Now, the winter solstice is also uh, one of the celebrations in the winter solstice is the birthday of Mithra. Now, we know mm -hmm. that Mithra and also the birthday of Shango. Yes. Now, we know that Mithra was born in a cave on December 25th. Mm -hmm. On December the 25th. Um, to show you some things. This particular solstice and the 25th was also the, the sacred day of the faith. Let me, get, let me spell this right. Okay. Let me spell this right. You can mm -hmm. look that up. It's called the Fae, F-A-E. Now, this summer on True Blood, old Sookie going to connect. She's already connected to the Fae. The Fae is the fairies. Now, December 25th and Christmas is also a sacred day to the fairies. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what happened. I became conscious maybe two and a half decades ago. Somewhere in the mid eighties. Mm -hmm. And since for the last so so for all of the nineties I never celebrated Christmas. That's the first thing you do and when you come conscious, you wanna <laughs> throw away stuff. I ain't celebrating no Christmas. Now I haven't gone back to church since nineteen ninety, only for funerals, so that's a different thing now. I don't need to be caught dead up in there. So I didn't celebrate Christmas. So this is what happened. I was doing a lecture in Baltimore, Maryland. In, uh, uh, in 2005, uh, the next day we did, a, we did the major lecture. Then we, did, we, we came to this brother's house and we did a, a sit-down, which is that's when you see me by myself, you know, and I'm sitting down and I'm asking questions. I'm going through whatever I'm dealing with. We call it a sit-down. So we did the sit-down um, mm -hmm. the next day. So we was at the brother's house who, who, whose house he provided for the sit-down. It was a nice, brand-new, nice home. And he started apologizing for the Christmas trees and all of this thing based on the wife and all of that. At right. that particular moment, the fairies came to me and said, hey, that's our day. Mm. You got to realize Christianity usurped holidays that were sacred to people long before Christianity got there in the certain right. areas. So they yeah. usurped December 25th. They usurped a lot of rituals and stuff. You see what I'm saying? It was dealing with the spirit world and the fairy world. A lot of that stuff coming from Ireland. A lot of that stuff coming, going all the way back to a time, remember when black people used to live up in Europe? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and it existed yeah. from the time of Stonehenge and indigenous yeah. people. So, the, and so this whole fairy kingdom, they said that was our holiday and all those particular things with the Christmas tree and the, and, and the lights and all that, they grew the fairies. And so, therefore, I, shit, I've been, I, uh, I've been um, dealing with the Christmas tree and dealing with all that stuff, and people be perplexed. I'm like, no. And, I, I, and, I, and we put up a whole fairy kingdom at the front door in the spring of the year. Well, that's their day. But it was interesting. They came to me uh, five years ago and told me to start celebrating that and all because, and, and, and get out of the fact that, you know, a lot of this stuff we see, these are holidays and different things that used to happen. You see what I'm saying? Long before... Christianity got to the particular area and usurped that um, those particular people holidays. You see what I'm saying? So I just want to want to want to uh, uh, want to coincide with that. So moving right along, okay. Hi. So. Yeah. Um. So now, Kunsu is very key. Now, it was sometime in the 19, I think it was 1980. Nine in 1988, Farrakhan had come out and he had reintroduced everybody to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. And so it was real hot that time. And the Malcolm X movie was slated to come out. So the first thing I did is I went, I was into the Afrocentric movement with John Henry Clark and, and Dr. Ben and all the scholars. So the first thing I did is 
I went to the bookstore, and along with all the other books I was buying, I was heavy into getting into the Egypt and all this stuff. I bought the message to the black man. Okay. So when I was reading the message to the black man, he mentions that the moon <laughs> used to be a part of the earth, and the moon was separated from the earth. Mm. I said, this nigga done lost his damn mind. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm just ready right. to discredit the whole thing based on this. You see what I'm saying? Because, you, know, um, you know, I'm educated and all this kind of thing. Yeah, I'm on this scholastic thing. I'm on a, in a in intelligentsia that's bringing this stuff. I said, this is some crazy shit. Then I later on find out that the Dogon has the same mythology. And then I later on come to find out in the occult world, there was a book called... Uh, um, some book on Atlantis that a guy by the name of Lewis Spence wrote. And in there they made references to the moon separated from the earth. And over the course of years, I've probably read dozens of references of the moon being separated from the earth. Now, if the Dogon said it, it's science. You see what I'm saying? These books, you know, so National Geographic had a great thing on the moon. I think it was called... Uh, the, the series is not Explorer. It's, it's another one, the, what the series is, and I'll find out. But it had a, a whole thing on the moon. And right. based on our scientists now, or based on the modern scientists, they all agree that the moon used to be a part of the Earth. Now, they say how it was separated. It probably was a meteorite or what have you. But in the impact, separated the moon from the earth, and the moon been controlling the damn earth ever since because your tides come in. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? When the moon mm -hmm. is full, you got lunatics. That's right. <laughs> it, <laughs> yes. The, you get, it, it controls sex drives, and yeah. it controls the sacred moon monthly, which is called yeah. menstrual, the menses. Right. You see the yeah. menses. Now, there's been... Several Afrocentric people and occult and, and metaphysical people to try to get the female to turn against the menstruals. The menstruals. Right. Okay, I'm a person that studies. So when Dr. Ben and them was laying down them books, I said, I'm going to get every last one of them damn books. You see what I'm saying? Because right. when it all come down, I ultimately got to know what's going down. You see what I'm saying? So in my enormous aspect of study, and I got one up on a lot of them, because, you know, I used to go to the bookstore in the 90s. The bookstore would open seven days a week. And between the different bookstores, I used to go every day, every single day for about 10 years. And then when I, and when I was flying to the different cities to do the lectures, what I do? I go to these bookstores. So I don't need nobody to tell me about some goddamn bullshit that they can't cite these sources. You come into the one that I learned that trick from Dr. Ben and them. Cite your goddamn sources. So I, I, and look, I have read tons and tons of books, and I have never seen nothing that the ancient people say that we didn't have no menses. Now, you, now there's, a, there's a thing to say that you might have not bled as much as you did, but everybody got a cycle. Even males have cycles. True. And not only that, right. even if your menstrual cycle is not, if you're going through the change of life, you still got a cycle. So the 28-day cycle of the moon is connected to the 28-day cycle of the menses. And one had to come from the other. You see what I'm saying? Since we always been here, well, hell, the moon, the moon had to come from the black woman. That's now, right. <laughs> now, and there's several books out. It was a book called Her Blood is Gold by Laura Owen. They put it out a year, and then they took that shit off the market, dealing with the sacred menstruals. Men 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 so the, the great definitive text is called The Wise Wound mm -hmm. by Penelope, mm -hmm. Penelope Shuttle and Peter Redgrove. The Wise mm -hmm. Wound. You see what I'm saying? You see? So I don't let nobody put some bullshit on me that I don't have mm -hmm. access to study. You have to come with it to goddamn shut me up. There's another yeah. good book called, there's another good book called um, Dragon Time. If you don't have the author, you just need the, you just need the actual um, name of the book. It's called Dragon Time. Very curious book. Probably out of print. 
might cost you a little money, but sometimes a lot of out of print books might cost you two dollars. Now in this particular book, Dragon Time, they break the mysteries of melanin and the menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. And it goes and you might have heard me say these in the particular lectures that yeah. uh you have serotonin in the daytime, melatonin as a nighttime hormone. Right. Uh, and, and it's a nighttime hormone. When the menstrual cycle starts coming, you have these particular hormones rushing through at the same time, which means you might have a, you might be 12 o'clock in daytime and have a nighttime hormone come through, and you have a fucking mood swing. You see what I'm saying? That's, and that's, that's all right. based on melanin, melanin, melatonin, and serotonin. You see what I'm saying? Here go your thing with the sun and the moon. Serotonin is the sun. Melatonin right. is the is, is, is basically the moon. It's just that no one has connected it with the moon. You see what I'm, I'm, I'm connected it with the moon. So my point here is there's several um, things. They used to have a, a, a menstrual rite in Egypt called the Smen rites. S-M-E-N. Mm -hmm. So I don't need nobody telling me that this stuff that didn't happen. And everybody talking this shit about the menstrual just so happened to be male. You got to be crazy as hell. <laughs> Let a motherfucker usurp your body and tell you some bullshit. You see what I'm saying? And we got the right. doggone text. Right. You see, we got right. the text. The entire art, the, the basis of the moon is based on that, which lets me go to this particular part. Let me go to this particular part. Let me read mm -hmm. you something here. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me read you something right here. Um, so uh, let's see right here. Uh, we'll go right here. And put it right in your face, page 143, in the book that I just mentioned, Shamanistic Mysteries of Egypt. You see, Nikki Scully and Linda Starwolf. Let's turn to one, page 143. We're going to break this whole thing down. You all right? Okay. Oh, yeah. 143. We are good. We are good. Okay. Yeah. Whereas Tahuti is bold, Tahuti is connected. That's Thoth, Tahuti. Mm -hmm. um, Thoth, um, Hermes. Ibaris, um, Ganesha, he has several names, um, Elegba, God of the Crossroads, whereas Tahuti, a thought is bold and bright in the function of this God, of, uh, a function as a God of wisdom, moon magic, Kunsu is referred to the hidden side of the dark mysteries, the female mysteries, and especially the blood mysteries have yeah. been misunderstood and misrepresent, misrepresented and misdiagnosed, even defiled throughout history. Now, I can say that, yes, it's been misrepresented as a woman being evil, but when these, thing, when these laws first came down that you don't supposed to do a certain thing when a woman is on her menstrual cycle, well, that shit was real because she's so powerful at that time. You see what I'm saying? She can kill you, she, especially if you have her cook, and she get one little inkling of dissatisfaction with your ass. You can die from this power of the menses. You see what I'm saying? So they were right in this particular thing, but they weren't talking about she was evil. They just said, no, that's the dragon time. Hits the, the name of the book. You see what I'm saying? And what we're talking about power. You see what I'm saying? We're talking about power. But... We, 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 we're dealing with that particular menstrual cycle, and right. the God that governs the menstrual cycle is called who? Kunsu. 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 Yeah. You see what I'm saying? In this particular menstrual cycle. Now, um, now, let me explain something on what this is. So let's break this thing down off of the holy level, because we don't need another hundred gods to worship. We need to understand <laughs> that these gods are formulas yes. to be utilized. And the person who gains the power utilizes these deities as formulas. Well, let's see who the hell Kunsu is. We mentioned at the first part of the, the mentioning of Kunsu that Kunsu is called the night traveler. Traveling the night traveler. Now, let's see here. Melanin is secreted through the pineal gland. It's called the hormone of darkness. Is the night traveler. Serotonin is the day traveler, you see. So when we're talking about this thing, you see, the night traveler travels through the 
the blood system travels through the blood system. 